so let's get to it, man. The, the more days that pass and the more people bring it up, the more information I get. I had a video I was going to drop on this. I scrapped the whole thing because I got more information. So, you know, I'm going to talk about a lot as far as the submarine It's going to be a mini pod or mini podcast. I'm probably going to have some timestamps and things of that nature. And the majority of the video is not going to be about the people on the ship. It's going to be about the reaction to everything. As far as what everybody has been on, what everybody has done, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, as far as the regular people. So let's get into it. So the important information I want to go over first, five people died on, you know, the uh, submersible or submersive, whatever you call this shit, a submarine. I'm going to call it a submarine throughout this because that's the word I'm familiar with. So. You know, before I even get to that, I want to say condolences to the families, condolences to the family of the victims, families of the victims, you know, condolences to them and rest in peace to those victims. You know, I'm not going to say nothing crass about them or nothing crazy, but, you know, some things do need to be said. So, you know, as far as the ship itself, we'll just get into that out the gate, man, like very very unsafe and it's puzzling because what i just found out is that you know stockton rush which i'm going to talk about him he's the you know gray hair guy who was the ceo of this company and he went down there you know uh and he passed as well but he let me just get to it man he was very reckless about this you know i'm going to put screenshots of quotes that he said, and I'm probably even going to put a clip in this if I remember to put it. But even if I don't, I'm just going to speak on what it was. He basically said, you know, the thing runs off a controller and like they laughed about it. And, you know, he also shunned people in those screenshots that you see about the safety, you know, concerns that they had because people had addressed him as far as like government bodies and et cetera, et cetera. You know, people that are official have addressed him about the safety concerns and he just brushed all that off and he's been working on it since 09. Experimental submersible vessel that has not been approved or certified by any regulatory body and could result in physical injury, disability, emotional trauma or death. Where do I sign? Oh, take your shoes off. That's customary. Okay. Wow. Inside. The sub has about as much room as a minivan. So this is not your grandfather's submersible. <laughs> we only have one button, that's it. It should be like an elevator. You know, it shouldn't take a lot of skill. The Titan is the only five person sub in the world that can reach Titanic depths, 2.4 miles below the sea. It's also the only one with a toilet, sort of. And yet I couldn't help noticing how many pieces of this sub seemed improvised. We can use these off-the-shelf components. I got these from uh, Camper World. We run the whole thing with this game controller. <laughs> Come on! It seems like service. An experimental... 09, 09, dog. So over 10 years. He is... It, it, it's None of this was wise. I just got to go over everything. So, you know, the, the submarine was very small. The submarine was like a big sewage tube that people could just sit in, you know, and it didn't have any chairs. The submarine was not ran by a steering wheel. Like, you know, you, you look at any vehicle, we're talking about planes, we're talking about motherfucking cars, we're talking about boats. They have some type of steering wheel. Even subs, I know they got some type of shit. You know, I've I've seen the shit in the past, you know, as far as the old school subs and stuff. I don't know what they're doing right now. But, you know, as far as this, it was ran off a $30 controller, a $30 Logitech controller. That is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. I don't understand how that becomes something that you put your hands in the life of. I said, let me redo that sentence. I don't understand how you put your life in the hands of a $39 or $30 game controller, $29 from Amazon. I don't understand how you do that. The, the joint only opened up from the outside. 
you know, it's a bunch of facts that I could just ring off, you know, like deep sea divers from the Navy SEALs and stuff like that. When they practice submarine rescue and like, you know, deep sea rescue, they only go 2000 feet. You know, this is close to 4000 feet. It's over 3000, close to 4000 as far as the Titanic and everything. You know, um, I've heard that they've had trips before. And I heard on one of the trips they got lost for five hours. I just don't know. But when you look at it, the thing that really gets me, if they've had successful trips before and people have paid for this before and the people on this paid two hundred fifty dollars or two hundred. I'm sorry, two hundred fifty thousand each. You would think. That those type of investments could lead to you know, a more solid unit to go down there in a better control system. And, you know, I don't know what type of test they've ran or anything like that. But again, you know, as far as the CEO, the CEO was very reckless. And to anybody with common sense, it doesn't seem like a good idea, especially on that type of vessel where he didn't even get seats put in, man. You see, you see the submarines on, like, you know, when you go to like a World War II exhibit or even when you look at the old movies and stuff like that, you know, like they're they got halls and everything. That's government grade stuff. This is not government grade. This is made by a guy and the guy was very reckless. So unfortunately, that's what it led to, et cetera, et cetera. So it just wasn't the wisest thing. Saddest thing is that a child died, you know, a 19 year old teenager, of course, you know. It, that's extremely sad. And he went because, you know, he was there with his father and everything. And Father's Day was passing and he was very terrified, you know, to even go down there. That, you know, you got all this stuff flying around that I'm going to talk about. And I didn't really feel much. I'm not about to sit here and lie. I didn't really feel much because, again, like the whole thing, especially I didn't see anything of anybody else talking except the CEO. So I can't put any like real heavy blame on the other people who decided to go. But when you look at the CEO and what he was aware of, it's like you you were putting people's lives in danger. And that was the end result. And even then, it's still not the wisest decision as far as the other people who went. But it's very sad that a 19 year old lost his life doing this. So. That's the whole setup as far as the premise to everything we're going to get into, because, you know, we, we got to go through everything that's been going on and we're going to start with the jokes. You know, over the Internet, there have been a lot of jokes, you know, a lot of memes. I know you've seen them if you are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, any of that. You have seen the jokes if you're only on TikTok or you're only on YouTube, you might not see the memes. But the memes are out there. They're going crazy. And for me, I look at the thing two ways, two different ways, as far as my personal opinion on the memes and stuff like that. The first thing is the Internet is going Internet. You know, these people have no compassion, no filter, no nothing. I've seen some of the craziest racist jokes. And even as a black dude, I'm not going to lie. Some of it I laughed at. Some of it really pisses me off, you know. But that's just the Internet. That's what it's going to be. Number two, when you understand comedy and comedians and things like that, you know, there are really no boundaries. It's just about what you're with, like, what you're going to put out there and what backlash you're willing to deal with as far as the comedy, because there used to be a point where there was no backlash for comedians as long as they were funny. You know, George Carlin said the N word. It just is what it is. You know, that's just what it is. So and he said that in a time where it was very controversial. It's like, you know, whatever, whatever, you know, as where somebody like Michael, Michael Richards says it in the 90s, not in the 80s, not in the 70s. He says it in the 90s. But he says it angrily to a heckler and, you know, it's not in the context of a funny joke. He's just mad. So he gets canceled for that pre cancel culture. So, you know, those are two things that I look at, you know, as far as the Internet, the Internet is going to be the Internet. You can't win against the Internet. Nobody has a heart on the Internet. Just log off. 
you know, you get the worst people. You got to really think about the people who be on the Internet. You know, it'd be like people who don't really go outside, people who wouldn't say this shit to people face and stuff like that. You got to understand the Internet. Just go on the Internet. That is what it is. And when it comes to comedy, you know, I understand that, you know, people joke about tragedies all the time as far as comedians. And there's really. I personally, when I tell jokes, you know, I'm not a stand up comedian or nothing like that, but I do get my jokes off. When I tell jokes, I try to keep people's boundaries in mind, but I'll give you a good example of someone who doesn't. Gilbert Godfrey, rest in peace. You know, when there was a tsunami in Japan, he had the Aflac, you know, sponsorship or whatever, the endorsement. He was an Aflac duck. You know, he's an Aflac. That was him, Gilbert Godfrey. He was also on Problem Child and all types of other shit. When the tsunami happened, he had all types of jokes. A lot of people died in that tsunami, and he had all types of jokes on Twitter for it. One of the jokes he said was something along the lines of, I just released my CD in Japan. You know, it had a huge splash. With that, with those jokes, Aflac cut him off. He was done. He was canceled. It was over. You know, Roseanne is Jewish. She just had all the Nazi stuff happen. She got the whole show canceled. Everybody was geared up. They they was ready for a whole reboot. They was probably going to do multiple seasons and stuff. Yeah, she killed that for the sake of comedy as far as the shit she was doing with the Nazi shit and the Hitler shit and all that. So that's just what comedy is. And I understand that, you know, is it distasteful? Yes, but. You know, it, you just got to accept it. It is what it is. You can't stop it. You know, you could probably stop an individual. But when it comes to the Internet, the Internet is going Internet. You can get at your friends for sharing it and all that stuff. But it is what it is. So with all of that being said, I'm not about to lie like some of it wasn't funny. But, you know, again, it's tasteless. It just is what it is. I'm not about to get on my high horse and act like I didn't laugh at none of this shit. Like, it, if it's funny, it's funny. And this is the thing about it. We are so detached because it's not people that we personally know. And it's not a situation close to us. That's how come the jokes be like that. And if you look, when Kobe died, it fucked up a lot of people. And when Ari Shafir said some fucked up shit about it, everybody was ready to jump on Ari Shafir and beat his ass. And he had to go into hiding for however long. Again, that's comedy. Even though I didn't think there was anything funny about that. I don't think it was just like the Michael Richards shit. He wasn't even attempting to be funny, you know, but he does dark comedy and he tried to hide under the guise of comedy for the, you know, shit he was saying. And it led into him, you know, pretty much going in the hot and not really following through with the touring he was doing and all that stuff, you know. So with that being said, that's that's that whole thing now. Where we go after that is the reaction of people to those jokes and people were really getting on their high horse saying, so this is what we doing now. We joking about dead people like, you know, how how fucking how dare you make fun of dead people? You guys are the worst. You guys are hard. Da, 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 all this stuff, you know, there were, and there were other people who were guilty and I'll get into that later. You know, matter of fact, I just say that now. One person was like, you know, oh, and this was a viral post. It was like, oh, you know, what if that was your family on a motherfucking man? My family is not paying two hundred fifty thousand to get on a fucking submarine with no seats. That's controlled by a controller. Like that's just ridiculous. But all that aside, like you know, that's that's what people were going on. Like you know, y'all making jokes about dead people now. Now this is the thing about that. When Queen Elizabeth died, not Queen Elizabeth, what whatever her name is, man, the Queen, the the Queen, I, it might have been Elizabeth, but uh, whatever the Queen was, you know, of England, when she died recently, everybody had all the jokes. Everybody had all the jokes, especially you know when it came to the you know, anti-apartheid slavery, black people and stuff like they was on it. Everybody had the jokes. But nobody questioned it then. Nobody questioned, you know, should we be joking about death then? It was it was just like we all for it. That's what everybody was on. 
But then, you know, okay, we get past that. We say, oh, she was doing bad shit. You know, you also got the chick who was, um, who told on Emmett Till when she died, everybody made jokes about her death. And you could say both of them, oh, they were bad people. They were bad. Okay, 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 okay. You were. So the first thing about that is you have proof. If you say that, if you say they were bad people, who care? You prove that there's a justifiable situation. You know, you prove that it's possible to justify making fun of somebody's death when you say that. That's just what it is. Now, outside of that, the other thing is, all right, let's let's go with that. Let's pretend that's the case. You know, what about Tina Turner? Tina Turner died recently. Y'all had joke. Y'all had all types of Ike Turner jokes about her and she wasn't a bad person. She was actually a victim. Y'all had all types of jokes about her. I didn't see nobody say, oh, we joking about people dead now. We joke. We joke. Duh, 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 duh. Nope. None of that. Y'all rolled with it. You know, you got Betty White Castle's making jokes about her. It'd be so many celebrities that die and people do the mistaken identity jokes where they like it'll be somebody that die and they post a picture of like Bill Cosby instead of the person that actually died. Like, you know, shit like that. It'd be all of that. You know, Kevin Samuels died, man. That was some of the most distasteful shit that, you know, a lot of black women was doing. They was celebrating his death. You know, it, it, it just be a lot of that. So with that, it's a lot of hypocrisy when it comes to people getting upset about the jokes, because like y'all, where was y'all at last week when Tina Turner died? Where was y'all at during all these other dead jokes about all these other dead celebrities and dead people and stuff like that? Where was y'all at? Where was y'all at? So it's, it's just a lot of hypocrisy. So we get past that. And then the other thing, this is probably going to be the last thing I touch on, which is the whole celebrities, not celebrities, but, you know, I seen somebody say, well, you know, to be a billionaire, you got to be smart. So why would they even do this shit? Da, 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 da. Now, this is no knock towards them other than like, you know, Stockton Rush, because, you know, it, I can't lie. Like, it, it just wasn't the wisest of him specifically. To really be going against these safety re regulations and rebelling and all that stuff. Like, because at the end of the day, he lost his life, but other lives were lost because of him to an extent. And I can't even put that all on his shoulders because they knew to an extent what they were getting into. That's a dangerous situation. You know. There was something I said in the last video that, you know, I didn't get to. And it's because as far as the other people, I actually began to feel empathy for them outside of, you know, Stockton Rush because of all the shit that you've seen that I put up about what he was saying. You know, but what I said earlier, I'm, I'm just going to get it out the way now is basically there are three levels of danger people can put themselves in. And I'm going to simplify it real quick. You know, the first level of danger is getting in a car or something along those lines. Getting in a car, getting on a plane. People do it every day, but planes crash and automobiles crash as well. So people could die. But, you know, it's, it's necessary. And it's pretty fucking safe for the most part. You know, th there's a high success rate. You then have a level above that, which is like, We'll say like, uh, what do you call it? Like fucking parasailing or like, uh, well, what is that shit? Um, bungee jumping, skydiving, shit like that, where they got all types of safety precautions and people do it all the time. And you'll have somebody that's, you know, the, the skydiver that gets on somebody's back and pull the parachute. And that's their actual job. And they've been doing that for 20, 30 years type shit. And it's pretty safe and it's proven safe, but there is a high risk to that. And then you got the other category, which is the third, which is people doing some David Blaine ass shit. Well, the fucking tightrope walking across like the 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 Empire St or the World Trade Center, the Twin Towers and shit like that. You know, very dangerous shit doing parkour on skyscrapers and shit, you know, fucking. Um, uh, um, I, I can't think of too many things that level of dangerous, but it's it's like. 
you really trying to defy death type shit. And there's nothing really to keep you safe in this situation. And it's not something to where there's like a safeguard or anything. It's a very dangerous situation. So I say that to say, you know, as far as getting in a car accident, if somebody dies in that, you know, it's definitely unfortunate. If somebody dies bungee jumping or skydiving, it's still unfortunate. But you like people are going to say, that's how come I don't skydive. That's why I don't bungee jump, because it's high risk. It's high risk. Even if you want to argue this not and go look at statistics and stuff like that, every it's common sense that you could die doing that shit. You could die doing that shit. Now, as far as the third category, there's nothing really to keep you safe for the most part. It is an extremely dangerous situation. So, you know, when you see something like that, you know, the sympathy is even less. It's like, why the fuck would somebody do that? And that's how a lot of people look at this situation. Just flat out point blank, period, without sugarcoating it. That's how a lot of people look at this situation. So with all of that being said, you know, as far as like the whole the, the last shit I mentioned about the jokes and stuff like that, the reason a lot of people really feel cool getting it off is because they feel like it was self-inflicted and it's kind of ridiculous that they put themselves in that situation. That's why a lot of people really don't feel that much guilt. If it was a different situation, like a fucking like some pedophile shit where a kid got fucked up or something and cats had jokes about it, it would... It, it would be universally considered a lot less tasteful. Just keeping it real. But, you know, cats make OJ jokes and stuff like that. OJ murdered somebody. Like, you know, it's that's that's the type of culture we've been living in for quite a while. So that's just that. Now, the last thing as far as the smart billionaire and stuff like that. So we, I had to mention that because when we get to this, you know, that was the third type of situation as far as, you know, the three levels of danger that I laid out and stuff like that. You know, just because someone is a billionaire. That doesn't mean that they're smart. And also outside of that, just because someone's a billionaire, that doesn't mean they work hard either. Now, I'm not even talking about the people on the submarine. I'm just talking about that comment that I seen, you know, somebody started off a status saying, well, you know, to be a billionaire, you, you got to be smart. No, you don't. Donald Trump has proven this. All you have to have is business knowledge. You don't even have to have that much. You also need to have the capital to put yourself in a position to earn those billions. People don't really earn billions from the ground up for the most part. Now, I could be wrong on that, but a lot of people come from wealth. A lot of people have a head start. A lot of people have something that puts them in a lucrative position. You not really like the McDonald's shit where you got like a dude like Ray Kroc and shit like that. That's not it's only 3000 billionaires in the world globally. So that type of shit is not shit that just really be happening at a high frequency, especially when you think about all the millionaires and then just all the humans. 3000, only 3000 got a billy. So. With that being said, man, like, you know, again, Donald Trump, perfect example, because two stupid things Donald Trump did when the world was watching. He asked the motherfucker at a press conference, you know, will bleach cure COVID like it. So if I drink bleach, he said something along those lines. It was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. Then you had that fucking eclipse shit. And all the scientists are saying, like, dog, don't look directly into the sun with your raw eyes. Put on some sunglasses if you're going to look at the sun during this eclipse. That motherfucker looked directly at it with no glasses while everybody around him got glasses. And you the president. Like, it's hilarious, dog. So you look at him and he's got books where he gives a lot of gain. He's definitely very knowledgeable. He's also a good manipulator and stuff like that. You've seen it in like, you know, but, but, but he's a salesman as well. That's just what it is. So, you know, he, he wrote the art of the deal and all that stuff. So he's crafty and he knows what he's doing when it comes to that stuff. But when it comes to common sense shit, sometimes it'd be lacking dog. Sometimes it'd be fucking lacking. That's just what it is. 
And even if we get past him and some other motherfuckers you could probably think of or dig up, but even but but this is the other thing as far as the hard work and stuff like that. You know, his grandfather was rich. His dad was rich. He came into the game with dad's money. Like, come on, man. Like, y'all be on this generational wealth from fucking. Y'all be trying to talk this. Oh, we going to make generational wealth from fucking sewing quilts together in my quilt business where I sell lashes on the side. And I'm going to be like a billionaire. Dude. Like, no, it don't work like that, dog. It don't work like that. I could I could get deep. You look at like the other thing about it is like when we go back to the stupidity, man, it's so many rich, stupid motherfuckers. How do you not like we not even go into the billion. Let's just go back to the millionaires and stuff. It's so many stupid millionaires. How the fuck do you think that you got to be smart to, to fucking be a billionaire like or a millionaire? How do you how do you think that? If you look at somebody and I hate to do this, but if you look at somebody like Floyd Mayweather, like y'all, y'all know the whole shit with the reading and stuff like that. You know, I hate to even be any type of disrespectful when it comes to like, you know, Floyd specifically. You know, because I just said all that about Donald Trump, but it is what it is, man. He races to a certain extent, but. You know, as far as Floyd, like he couldn't read the books and shit like that, da, 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 da. you know, he can't articulate himself well, you know, but but what can he do? He can box his ass off. He can box his ass off. And he may understand the promotion game because that's where he get a lot of his money. Like, you know, he, he made his own promotion company after leaving Golden Boy and shit. So with all of that being said, like, that's not the smartest motherfucker, but that nigga's rich as fuck. He's rich as fuck. He's rich as fuck. He's filthy fucking rich. And you ask yourself, how did he get skilled? Because he didn't come from no silver spoon shit. Well, he got good at a high ticket skill. He is very skilled in boxing. He is very knowledgeable about boxing. But it doesn't make him an intelligent individual as far as when you have a conversation with him, when you see him speak, you know, just knowing just certain shit. That's just what it is, man. So, you know, that that's, that's, that's all it is. And even then, if I even go one step further, like if you got the bread, however you got the bread, you know, a motherfucker could just invest in a startup in a startup, go crazy. It, it, it'd be worth billions of dollars. And now you become a billionaire off that investment. So with that, does that make you like just a smart, but like, does that just automatically make you smart because you dump some money into some shit that actually was successful? No. No, it doesn't. It absolutely doesn't. It just means you made a good investment. And people don't just take shit at face value for what it is. If you are a billionaire, it means that you have either made investments or, you know, ran businesses that are lucrative, that are more than likely better than most of the competition. You were probably at the top tier of the shit. You probably had to fail quite a bit to get where you are and stuff like that. And shit, in some cases, you may, you very well may be intelligent. In some cases, you might just be a fucking doof. I could get into Elon Musk and all that shit. Y'all be thinking Elon Musk is a genius, man. He just get the geniuses around him. He just come up with the ideas. He's not a scientist or no crazy shit like that. He's just a rich motherfucker. But, you know, with that, I'm pretty much done. You know, that's the... That's the mini podcast and all that. Let me know your thoughts. I'm out.